Hi, my name is Biggie and I would like to talk to you about fibroids. There's no good place to start, so I'm going to start right in the middle and somewhere I will put the backstory of everything that happened so far. So where are we now? It is nearing the end of March 2018. I have so far spent the entire year owned and ruled by this fibroid situation and uh, my surgery date has just been put back by about another month. So that means instead of recovering in four weeks from now, I'll still be waiting with trepidation to be cut open and hopefully fixed. I'm finding it really difficult to be constantly waiting and to the entire time while I'm still waiting, being kind of trapped in this storyline, in this narrative of I'm in pain, I'm sick, I can't do things, sometimes I'm not in pain, but in other times I might be. Every movement I make, I can feel the fibroid, I can feel a low level pain at all, almost all times. And I feel sort of really kind of uh, sabotaged by this confused formation of cells in my own body. And I'm having a quite a difficult time. I just found out yesterday that the surgery is being changed and well, I didn't have a fixed date for March, but I was told it would definitely be before the end of March and that's not the case now. And I don't really want to complain about it because I don't know what's happening at the hospital and what's happening on the surgeon's schedule and what other maybe more urgent cases than me came in. I think it's important to treat the people who need it the most first even if I was in the line a little earlier. But um, what it feels like is is like uh, running a marathon and you're getting close to the, what I imagine running a marathon is like, getting close to the finish line. And then just as you're like seeing it and it's in sight and you're like, okay, maybe I can make it. Someone tells you, oh, actually, it's another 10 miles. Sorry. And I think what I mean with that is it's like, I'm obviously not running a marathon, but there's something about mental health that is difficult to maintain when you are sort of trapped. So my case of my fibroid is pretty bad, and in my case, it there were many weeks this year where I was un completely unable to leave the house. I wouldn't walk a voluntary five meters never mind getting on a bus because I was in so much pain. And then just as it got a little bit better, I still just spent a long time being highly anxious, highly frightened of this pain returning. And I just couldn't take public transport. I couldn't go anywhere. I'm a work freelance normally, and I couldn't do that. I'd lost all of my clients last year as I was getting sicker and sicker and not knowing why. And then Christmas came and the last struggling clients I had were gone. So, and then by Christmas, I was sick as a dog. And by January, well, even before Christmas, I'd already seen my healthcare practitioner the first time and was getting this process of getting checked out on the road. And yes, yeah, so that was a really huge time. And I'd like to talk about that maybe another time. But now I just wanted to kind of check in here and make a start somewhere. And for me, this is my first fibroid post. And it's, I'm making it because I obviously I'm not sure how, how useful my waffling and unedited thoughts are to anybody. But I imagine I'm not the only person being maybe nervous about surgery, having a difficult time. Um, even accepting that surgery is really the only thing that is going to be really helpful or maybe there are other things but surgery is the only thing that's right now working for you and maybe I was just thinking maybe I'm not the only person who's having a hard time with all this decision making and then and then finding to still be in a waiting loop and not being able to just take the action right there and then to take a step towards what hopefully is going to be recovery and what hopefully is going to put us back into an independent, healthy life. I 
know that a lot of people with fibroids don't suffer with them as much as I have done, but I'm pretty sure there are some out there who do, and who, like me, haven't been able to leave the house, who even, maybe if they have a time in which they feel a little bit better, aren't able to re-enter work, because it's the time in between, like, so there's the bad time of, like, terrible, terrible pain, and then there's a bit where it's maybe okay, but you can't do anything with this bit, because surgery is here, and no one's going to give you work for this part, and well, it just depends. I know my situation is quite unique, and maybe we'll talk about it another time. What am I hoping you might get out of this? I don't know. You're not alone. So yesterday when I found out that my surgery was going to be postponed by about another four weeks or so, maybe more, I really had a little bit of a meltdown. I felt terrible. I just felt like I can't carry on. I can't carry on with this constantly thinking about being sick. It's not so much that I'm choosing it. It's that the feeling is so present I can't ignore it. So that's what the problem is. I have plenty of things to distract myself with, but... Like just now when I shift, I'm standing and just as I shifted legs, like I could feel the fibroid again. And it's got this kind of stinging pain, like as if someone's sticking a knitting needle in there. But at other times it has a different type of pain. And so right now it's not so bad. I wouldn't be standing here speaking otherwise. But yeah. So I think, so after I had my meltdown and I had a second one today, I had just a howling crying session in the car. And I think it was just this frustration, this helplessness, this just seeing my life going down a drain. And I'd made some not so wise career decisions in the past. And I'm still trying to catch up and get back on top. And yeah, that's obviously not happening. Um, so having this, this big fiber situation going on, that's in my case completely debilitating me. I don't know, it's just it's just a lot. And then I'm having to live with this for even longer. But what's really important is do have a good cry. I think maybe this is where I'm thinking maybe this is something that might help you, I don't know. And I think it's really okay to have a big mammoth session of a freak out once in a while and really just let it hang out if you need to. Have a cry or just have a howl at it, um, but then you, we kind of have to let that go. Because if you spend every day holding that and kind of feeding the problem with, let, with allowing your thoughts to be so tangled up in this growth of cells in your pelvis, <clears throat> well, you really can't do anything else. And if, like me, you're not able to really leave the house and you're only going out for shopping trips or maybe like maybe it's particularly bad and you can't go anywhere by yourself at all, which is a little bit my situation at least 50% of the time, and you have to be driven everywhere and you're feeling terrible because you have no independence, there are a couple of things you can do. And they're not maybe what you want to hear, but I think most of us could can benefit from some kind of further development that can be in an academic sense, that could be finally catching up with, I don't know, arithmetics. Maybe you're not good at it or something, right? And then there's like this free online academy called Khan Academy, where you can take these free mathematics courses. So it could be something like that. Or in my case, I'm thinking maybe to... I teach German lessons, but I, it's more a kind of tutoring. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I should just use this time where I, where my life feels really wasted and all that's happening is storyline of the fibroid every day. Um, and use this time to improve my understanding of German grammar because it's really rubbish. And maybe I can do that and it can make me a better teacher, um, tutor. I don't do this full time, it's just something I do alongside of other things. But it would give me more confidence. So is there something that you could learn that would give you a lot of pleasure or confidence or maybe both? 
So like a, examples that I've just given were, in my case, maybe get myself some grammar books and really knuckle down, or maybe taken a mathematics program with Khan Academy online. This is not a sponsored thing, in case you're thinking that. Um, there are so many other places you can learn things for free online. And maybe if there's something specific, you can look around and you can try and create like a study plan for yourself. And I know how impossible it is to function if you're in the middle of the fog of pain. Like, and even after the pain goes, if the painkiller works or half the time it doesn't, does it? But you can use that time. And even then, there's like a little bit we can do to help ourselves. There are some programs online, many of them probably for free, even on YouTube, where someone might give you a guided practice like of a meditation, or maybe you just hate meditation, maybe you do, um, then look for a breathing practice. Because they're really, really good. Just think about it. Pregnant women, before they give birth, uh, go to these pregnancy classes sometimes, and they always learn about breathing, and how breathing can help us to pain management and with control over the body. So that could be a good thing to look for. I don't have a specific tip right now, but I was thinking of putting some together sometime. Yeah. So I think what I was trying to say was you're not alone. I feel alone, but uh, you've now seen me. My life's completely in shambles right now because of long-term chronic pain that I thought was stress-related and turns out to be a mothership of a fibroid, pressing on all kinds of things and causing issues. I've had so much pain, I have been lying on the floor, squirming and whimpering and was my unable to control the movements of my hands because of so much pain. Um, I can tell you sometime what helped me to not have so much pain and to be able to stand here like this. But when I'm in that much pain, of course, nothing works. All you can do is let yourself be sick and try and calm yourself down. But while we're waiting for surgery, there are lots of things we can do, even if they're not exciting. Further development is one. Doing something about your diet might maybe be something you can do. It depends what, what your diet is like right, right now, right? So if your diet is maybe loads of processed foods because you're too weak to cook, because you're just so flipping sick, Try buy some apples or some oranges and eat a few of those and some bananas so you get something that you don't have to labor to get this healthy food. But um, you know what to do. You know what healthy eating is or you know enough. Internet is full of it. So there's some control we can take. A tip I can give you and I highly, highly suggest you take is cut out all sugar, more important even, all caffeine, no coffee and no black tea. Like, categorically, none of that. Coffee is proven to reduce the blood circulation in your sort of kidney area and also in the lower back area. And like all these areas that really need the blood circulation to help you with, with dealing with fibroids even. And coffee is on whole number of levels is really bad for you and for your nervous system. It's going to stress you out more than you already are. If you don't feel particularly stressed right now, try not having coffee for four weeks and see if that you can tell any difference. And be careful with the sugar. Mm, sorry, I didn't want this to be a 13 minute long video. I just wanted to kind of make a start which is really difficult because I'm very camera shy. I look terrible today. My hair's all greasy. And yeah. But let's start somewhere. Camera quality is shit. <laughs> but how are you? Has your surgery been put back? Or is it? haven't you got, got a date yet? Are you still waiting? How are you dealing with this time in which you're waiting? Are you able to use your time? For something that lets you feel like, okay, you're still achieving something in your life, or is that not so important because you actually have so much pain, it's just an achievement to just wake up. Um, 
I, I was at that place for a long time. Just waking up and just getting through the day was the only achievement I was capable of making. Mm. But yeah, so if you're there, don't worry about it. Just be kind to yourself. Drink warm water. Drink a lot of warm water. Um, help your, it helps your digestive system. And um, cold water is not so good for you. And it's, the warm water is more soothing. I don't know. I'm sorry. This wasn't terribly structured. And I have been waffling now for 15 minutes. But let me know. Where are you in your fibroid story? Maybe see you again soon. Ciao.